About two months ago, I released my new farming spreadsheet along with a video going over how it works. That video is now one of my most popular ones ever with the most comments out of anything on this channel, so I've decided to make a quick follow-up video to go over some questions and suggestions from you guys. But first, there's a common misconception about what efficiency means. It's not the same as the drop rate. It's the total value of the drops you get on average, divided by how much sanity the stage costs to run. For example, 510 has an efficiency of 92%, but that doesn't mean it drops a device 92% at the time. It only has a 32% drop rate for devices, but if we add up the total value of 0.32 devices, 1.85 rocks, and 252 LMD, we get 19.3 sanity. This is 92% of the sanity it costs to run the stage, and that's where the 92% efficiency comes from. Speaking of drop rates, I've made a few updates to the sheet since my original video, which are listed in this changelog tab. The biggest change is the new drops column and the main drop percent column in the individual item tabs. These columns tell you how a stage's drops are divided between the main item and other side drops. For example, if you're farming coagulating gel, 10-3 has the best efficiency in the long run. But if you need some as fast as possible, you might want to farm 14-8, since it drops more gel and less of other items, even if it's a bit less efficient overall. Just like the efficiency numbers, the main drop percent isn't the drop rate of the main item. It's a proportion of the sanity spent that gets returned as the main drop type. Like if you look at 1.7, it always drops 1 or 2 rocks, but the main drop proportion is only 76%, based on the average value of all rocks we get from it. Another change is that I've pulled together the data for stages with adverse and standard difficulties. Penguin Statistics tracks them separately, so my sheet used to show two entries with slightly different efficiencies. Sometimes adverse stages would have better statistics than standard ones, and sometimes it'd be the other way around. But as far as we know, adverse and standard stages have the same drop rates, so now the sheet just combines data for both difficulties and shows them as one stage in the sheet. Now onto something a bit controversial, the value of locks at coal. Some of you want me to raise its value back up, or to put some coal stages in the spreadsheet. Unfortunately, that just doesn't work. The value of coal is so low because event shops these days all sell an unlimited amount of them, and at such a low price that farming them from story stages is much less efficient. This means event shops now determine the value of coal instead of stages like 4-4. The same kind of thing happened when we got CE6, which dropped the value of LMD since CE5 was no longer relevant. There is one caveat though. If event shops aren't enough to meet your coal demands, then you'd be forced to farm more from story stages, which would raise the value of locks at coal back up. But realistically, this should never happen. Coal is so easy to get compared to other mats that in the long run, it's all the other materials that you'll be bottlenecked by. For example, in the Masses Travel event, we got enough spare sandy to get over 100 coal from the shop. If we split the available sandy between the two good farming stages, we get about the same amount of actin and grindstones. But since event stages drop different things between events, while coal is always in the shop, it's basically impossible to have a shortage of coal compared to other mats. In fact, if I were to raise the value of coal back up, most event stages would effectively drop more locks of coal than the actual main drop. So when I show the table of farming stages in my event math videos, they'd all start looking like this. Now before you start typing an angry comment about how event shops aren't always open, remember that this spreadsheet only cares about what's best long term, and we get events so often that it's pretty easy to plan around them. In September and October combined, we only had 9 total days where no events were open. If I ignored event shops for sometimes being closed, I'd also have to ignore supply stages for the same reason. That means S46 becomes the best LMD stage, 110 is the only way to farm skill books, and the sanity values for chips and red certs are now infinite. I know some of you will still disagree with my lower value for coal, and also manganese now we're getting it in shops too. Feel free to debate this in the comments below, but whatever you do, please don't use AI to write a bullshit argument that makes no sense. Anyways, let's talk about more sanity values. I've seen a bit of confusion about how I set EXP to a lower value based on drones, and I should probably clear it up. When I say LS6 is bad, and that it's better to use drones on EXP, I don't mean you should convert Sandy to drones. I mean you should take the drones you already get from your power plants, and use more of them on factories producing battle records. There's basically two ways to spend drones in the base. You can either boost trading posts and gold factories, which both give you more LMD, or you can boost EXP factories for more EXP. If you reallocate drones from LMD to EXP, then you're basically sacrificing some amount of LMD to get some other amount of EXP instead. Now if you farm CE6, you can make up for the LMD lost, and you're effectively spending Sandy to get EXP. 
But let's make sure this is actually better than just farming LS6. Making one gold bar and converting it to 500 LMD takes about 47 drones. The same number of drones can make 790 EXP in a factory. So for every 500 LMD we sacrifice, we get 790 EXP in return. Meanwhile, CE6 and LS6 both drop 10,000 LMD and EXP respectively. So if we farm LS6, every 500 LMD sacrificed only gives 500 EXP back. So LS6 indeed sucks. But this also has a caveat. Similar to locks at coal, if dumping all your drones to EXP doesn't get you enough of it, then you'd be forced to farm LS6 for more, and the value of EXP would go back up. But once again, this just doesn't happen for the vast majority of players. Max leveling a 6 star costs 1.2 LMD per EXP on average. This ratio gets even higher if you'd like to keep your ops at lower levels, or if you need to spend LMD on modules. Meanwhile, if you use a 252 base with 3 EXP factories and dump all your drones into them, you get LMD and EXP at roughly a 1 to 1 ratio. This means if you go all in on EXP like this, you won't even have enough LMD to use 20% of it. In the long run, reallocating drones will give you more than enough EXP, and you never need to farm LS6. For a real example, here's my Cruster Planner for all the ops I plan to build up to Haruka. I already have all the EXP I need, but I'm missing millions of LMD, even when I have all the best trading post base skills. Lastly for today, I've gotten some requests to make a shop spreadsheet like what most farming sheet has. Sure, why not? Here it is. It's got green certs, yellow certs, parametric models, intelligence certs, this big table for friend credits, and also the material vouchers they randomly hand out sometimes. Whenever there's Orundum or Gacha tickets in a shop, I list two efficiency values, which are the upper and lower limits for the value of Gacha pulls. We can't calculate an exact Sandy value for a pull, since there's no way to farm them using Sandy. Or rather, there is, but no one actually does it. So the upper bound for the value is based on producing Orundum in the base. If we add the value of the rocks and LMD needed to make enough Orundum for a pull, plus the drones needed for the factory and trading post, we find that one pull is worth about 860 Sandy. Players who choose not to do this, which is most people, value it less. For the lower bound, I just set 1 Originite Prime equal to 135 Sandy, which is what you get if you refresh Sandy with OP. Most players don't do this either, which means they value gacha pulls more. Everything else should be pretty simple to read, and I've left some notes just in case. As always, there's a link to this new spreadsheet in the description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.